Hi guys, welcome to this uh, video. So in this video, we will continue to look at the computer science um, release material for the May, June 2018 um, paper due to. In the last video, we covered a uh, section on um, um, task one. And um, basically, um, if you want to read about this, um, you can read about the scenario that we are working on. Just pause the screen, um, uh, the video, and then you can have it read at this. And then, um, Again, if you want to refresh your mind about what we covered in um, uh, task one, basically we just created um, a set of um, arrays that will be collecting the, um, the milk yields from. Like I said, we could have um, avoided creating 14 arrays by the use of multi-dimensional arrays. Um, but in this case, multi-dimensional arrays are not part of our syllabus. So um, I didn't want to write this program using multi-dimensional arrays. Otherwise, some people might struggle to understand them and then fail to implement this in their, um, in their um exams and stuff like that so uh, we stick with what we have um in the syllabus okay so um yeah so for the first part of um uh, task one we were just uh collecting the cow id and we had to make sure that cow id is formatted to meet a specified criteria for example we say that um the length of the characters or the number of digits must be um three digits and we also say that um uh, the cow ID should not have been existing previously in the list. So it should be, uh, it shouldn't be a duplicate of what we already have in the list. So we wrote code um, uh, which checks whether the ID that has been entered has three digits um, or that the ID doesn't previously exist in the list. If it does, then we flag that as errors. And then also we managed to collect um, the different um, yieldings for each cow. Um, um, using the different arrays that we created. And then we had a loop that was actually, you know, for the number of times that we, uh, number of, uh, um, what do you call this, the number of cows that we have, it will loop for that number of times so that we can collect each um, a yield um, from each cow, uh, okay? So basically that's what we did. So now we go to look at task two, and I'm just gonna go here. And um, for task number two, um, we basically calculating the statistics and um, using your recorded data from task one, um, calculate and display the total weekly uh, volume for, of milk for the head to the nearest whole number or whole liter, calculate and display the average yield per cow in a week to the nearest whole liter. So that's basically what we're doing for this one. So we'll start with the first part. We want to calculate um, how much milk um, we've been able to collect um, from all the cows uh, in that particular week. So it's like we have this huge um, uh, cup, not cup, let's call it a drum. And um, every time we milk a cup, we get the, that yield and we go and pour it into this huge drum that we have. Uh, for 14 days, we've been doing that. So now they ask us how much milk were you able to collect in that drum? And this is exactly what we want to do. Okay, so think about uh, think about it from that way. You're collecting milk from each drum, keep on pouring it. Uh, each milk, uh, or rather, each yield from a cow. Every time you you do that, you keep on pouring it there, and over a week you get to have all your milk there. And now they ask you, how many liters is this milk? Okay, that's that's basically what we're doing in simple terms. So let's go ahead and just um, go and code this. So what I'm going to do is just um, first of all, I'll uh, I would say this is task two. So just say task two, it's about the uh, statistics. So calculating the statistics. And then um, um, we'll just say, okay, this is gonna be um, calculating. Uh, this is a calculating, what am I doing? Calculating the milk yield for the week. And then, um, so what we're going to do is, um, you know, what is known as a running total. I don't know if you guys have heard about the term running total. Um, it's basically a, it's similar to, uh, it's not similar. It is actually the other name is totaling or summation. So you basically, um, like, I, like I showed you in the illustration previously, you are getting the milk that you collect on a particular day and you add it um, to this uh, variable. Uh, you keep on adding every amount of milk that you collect to this same variable. And uh, over time, the variable um, would have summed up all the values that you, know, you would have had. So um, what we're going to do is just create a variable. I'll call this variable as total uh, weekly uh, yield. 
is going for the pig. It's going to be a long variable name, um, but basically, I mean, I don't mind it being long as long as it is um, descriptive enough. So I'll set it to um, a value such as 0, 0.0 so that it, it is reflected as a float, okay? And then I'm going to have a loop which is going to read through all the individual arrays that we have. Remember, we have 14 arrays. So I'm going to have a loop which is going to um, read through for each cow. Um, so I'll say for each cow, so for cow number in range, and then just loop from zero to um, the head number. So how many cows do I have? So for each of the cows, this is what I want to do. I want to collect all the milk for that cow for that particular day. So I'll just say total milk uh, weekly yield or, um, for the head plus not use the morning. It's supposed to be total uh, weekly yield um, for the head plus Sunday yield. Okay, Sunday morning, not Sunday afternoon. So start with Sunday morning. Sunday morning yield, and then add inside here the cow number. So what this does is that it gets the yield for Sunday morning and store add it to this value, uh, which is 0, 0.0 at the, for the first time. And then um, this becomes the new weekly yield. If I collect milk for Sunday afternoon, I get this Sunday afternoon yield and add it also here, okay? So now what I want to do is, um, because I've already said this is a float, I want to convert this um, value into a float as well. If you don't convert this, you're going to have some error of some kind. Um, let me just run this so that you see what will happen. So just run this. And then um, let's just pull this up. Uh, I'll collect just for one cow and let's say uh, 001. And then let's collect the yield. They just say um, um, the one liter two liter, uh, just like that, um, just collect that. I just want to show you what happens and why we need to convert that value to, um, um, to a float before we actually perform a calculation here in line 76. So it tells us that line 78, okay, which is this line, um, it tells us that there is an error. If you check the type of error, it's telling you that um, the error is actually, you're trying to add two things. You have got a float and you've got a string and you're trying to add this, it's been treated as a string. So um, to avoid this error, you simply just add float outside here. And um, so what this does is that it converts the value that you retrieve from the list, uh, it converts it to a float so that it's of the same data type as this one. So if you run now the program, um, if you run it, just say, um, you're collecting for one cow and you want the cow ID to be that and just go ahead and just put some random values. Guys, they just have to be random values. You don't have to stress yourself about, you know, finding um, the correct amount of milk produced, like as if it's a research. Okay, so now you notice that we don't have an error. We've been able to calculate the running total for Sunday morning. Now, what we want to do now is replicate this um, work so that it is not just for Sunday morning, but it is Sunday afternoon, Monday morning, Monday afternoon, Monday, um, uh, Tuesday morning, and so on and so forth. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it here. So just get this and paste it here. And I'm just gonna change this, um, instead of having Sunday morning, uh, rather I'm gonna change this last part so that it is Sunday afternoon. Okay. Then again, um, this is just for Sunday, we need to do this for Sunday and Monday and you know Tuesday and so on and so forth. So I'm going to copy this, um, just get this uh, and copy that. And then we're just going to paste it um, for uh, Monday. So just paste it Monday, paste it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, it's up to, up to Sunday. You know, you can get carried away and you start again Sunday, Monday, and you just start going over the same stuff again. So here, I'm just going to change this to Monday. This is the Monday morning. And I'm going to change this to Monday afternoon. We want to add um, what we collected on Monday. Let's add what we collect on a Tuesday. And let's add what we collect on Tuesday afternoon. And then let's add what we collect on a... Um, on a Wednesday morning, let's also add what we collect on Wednesday afternoon. And let's add what we collect on Thursday morning. Let's add what we collect on a Thursday afternoon. It's like, remember what I showed you the drum that you have, a large container 
and you keep on adding to that container. You keep on pouring the milk that you collect in that to that container. And the container in this case is just a variable weekly um, total weekly yield for the head. So this is going to be uh, we've done Thursday afternoon. So we need now uh, Friday morning. Um, then we go ahead for Friday afternoon, and then the last one is Saturday um, Saturday morning. And then you have Saturday afternoon. Okay, I think this is done. Um, so we have collected this. So the next thing that we want to do is just to print out this, just to see uh, the printout. So just say the total weekly yield, the total weekly yield uh, um, is and then let's concatenate the value that we get. So just concatenate this with um, the value, um, the string value of the total weekly yield. Again, the same reason. Um, this value is a float, so you cannot just add it um, or concatenate without converting it to a string because this part on the left is a string. So you want to make sure that whatever you are concatenating, this is concatenating, it should be matching the data type. Otherwise, it will be attempted to add a string and a float, like if, as if it were a mathematical operation. Okay, so avoid that. So let's go ahead and um, run this. Let's say I'm collecting from one cow, uh, the cow ID 001, and then um, the the weekly yield is um, supposed to be two, two, three, just random values, guys. Again, you're just testing just to make sure that it's working perfectly. So it tells you the weekly yield is 36. So it's pr probably added up all these and 36 is the correct one. We won't go into trying to test if 36 is the correct one. So that's fine. Um, next, what we need to do now is um, uh, we need to find the average. Now to find the average, you need to wait until your program finishes to calculate the weekly yield. Otherwise, if you try to find the average here, just say average um, equal to the total weekly yield um, divide by the head number. Of course, that's the formula to find in the average, how many cows you have um, divided by. If you try to do this, what will happen is that every time it finishes calculating for one cow, it will find the average for that cow. Then you'll go ahead and calculate it for another cow. Again, it will write the average for that cow. But this is bad practice. So what you want to do is just basically push this outside the loop, okay? Outside this loop so that as soon as this loop terminates, it would have finished calculating for the number of cows that you have. And outside this loop, that's when you calculate the average. Now, guys, this is very important. So this is, I'll just call it average weekly yield. This is very important. So the average weekly yield is basically the total uh, yield that would have finished calculating after the loop. Notice that this print statement is um, for um, is um, although this print statement is actually supposed to be outside the loop. So I'll take it outside the loop. Okay, I'll just take it outside the loop because um, I want this to be printed after you have finished calculating for all the cows. If you leave it inside indented like at the same level as this one. What happens is that every time the loop runs for the second cow, this would be printed for the third cow to be printed for the fourth cow to be printed. Again, you don't want that. You want only to print when you have finished calculating. So what I'm going to do now is just to run this. And this time around, we're going to enter for two cows. So this is set two. And then um, the first ID is that. And let's just enter some random values again. Um, just some random values. Oh, we entered 32. That cow gave us a lot of milk. Um, Okay, so afternoon, morning, and afternoon, that's it. So we go for cow number two, enter the ID. Um, okay, just just be careful. Whoa, that one gave us 23 as well. Um, that one, everyone will want to have a cow like that one. Um, okay, Monday mornings, Friday afternoon, and Saturday morning, and the last one, Saturday afternoon. So then you have um, the weekly yield. It gives us the total 132, which is good, but we didn't print the average. So I'm just gonna put a print statement here to print the average. So just gonna say the average yield, the average weekly yield is, and then just go ahead and um, concatenate again the value of the average. So just say average um, weekly yield, um, but again, because it's supposed to be string value. So just add string there, okay, like that. And go ahead and run this one more time. Um, and then we're going to go for two cars and the first one, the ID 001, and we'll just enter some random values again. 
um, just some random values. Um, okay, Saturday afternoon, and then we enter for ID uh, number two and enter for the random values again. Just some random values to test this work. Whoa, I almost put 32 there. And afternoon, we're almost there. And afternoon, that should be it. So it tells us the total weekly yield is 87.0. And then the average yield um, is supposed to be 43.5, which is just two cows divided by this, uh, which gives us 43. But notice what the question asks us to do. Um, the question actually tells us that the yield is supposed to be to the nearest whole liter. Um, the same thing for the average as well, it's supposed to be the nearest whole liter. So we need to convert the values that we've calculated, we need to convert them to uh, the nearest whole liter. So how do we do that? Um, well, we can do that in a different number of ways. It is at the point at which we're displaying the value that we can convert it to uh, that. So inside here, before we, we add it, I'm gonna format it. Uh, okay, let's just say format. Okay, format, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, the total weekly. Uh, that format this um, as a string, okay, format it to zero, so dot um, zero f, okay, dot zero f, this means that format it to um, the nearest integer, okay. So guys, again, um, the same uh, one, let's try to run for this one as well. So just say format, and then um, this is going to be average yield, and then this dot zero f they're trying to convert this value um to um that now ideally the returned value when you format it like this it, it, this is already a string um so um I'll, I'll show you if i try to remove this let's just try to remove this and remove one bracket um, what the format does, it returns a string, okay? It doesn't return the number, but I think it returns a string. So if it returns a number, I think it will give us an error when we try to add or print um, this. So let's see if it will give us an error. So I'll just go for one cow this time, and then cow ID is that one, and let's go ahead and just add some random numbers. Um, if we don't get an error, it means the format returned a string, okay? Afternoon, morning, afternoon, and... There you go. So it just gave us a whole number and the average is now a whole number. So it's perfect. So um, we don't need to have the string format here because um, uh, the moment you use this, this one, the format, it returns a string by default. So you can easily add it to uh, concatenate it with this one. So there you go with uh, task number two. Um, basically it was just about adding um, the, adding the value, um, to a running total so that we can calculate how much milk um, we were able to collect over a period of one week and this is what we have just done there so the last part now which is task number three um i will uh, do task number three in the next video so let's just um wait for the next video